Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of Critty Reviews, with your host, Arlian. On today's episode, I'll be talking about the review copy I received to developer Yao's Arrest of a Stone Buddha, an action title riddled with melancholy. Find out if it managed to rock my world, or if it left me searching for something bold. You take the role of a Parisian hitman whose social life seems to be a hollow shell, serving only to kill time between the countless hits he's ordered out on. And that's, uh, mostly it, to be fair. Whilst there are a sparse handful of stilted conversations you hold with your handler, the game never really chooses to draw you into any sort of pressing plot, instead focusing on the protagonist's bland day-to-day -day life. And I do mean bland, given that beyond the briefing, there's not much to do in the framework of the narrative other than running small errands to pass the time. Whilst it's an interesting notion, the result was a story that I found myself with little investment in, given that it felt so devoid of anything substantial. Still, with the ultimate manner in which the game concludes, there's a weirdly fitting aspect to it all, the likes of which sort of adds a dismal cherry on top of everything. Or it would, if I wasn't still caught up snarking about how the protagonist wasn't arrested yet. Seriously, the art of subtlety is lost on this guy, since despite his job as a hitman, he can't go a single hit without mowing down a hospital's worth of mobsters, frequently in broad daylight. A job well done? Sure, let's wait at a train station while all the benches are occupied by mounds of corpses. Bullet riddled bus station? They were like this when I got here, officer. Still, however promising barrels of bodies may be, its execution was something else entirely on a gameplay front. For one thing, its action segments feel ponderous, as the player character moves at a speed that might seem right at home for a snail if it had bumbled into a tar pit. Even as hordes of enemies rush over to your position, he simply can't be arsed to do more than shuffle along like some sort of homicidal aimbot. And, and I mean that, given you never miss. In fact, most of the tension in these segments just comes from the fact that there's no real UI. Yes, the weapons have ammo, but you never really can see how much it has, so it behooves you to allow enemies to run up to you so you can disarm them, since you also can't reload. And you also can't loot the deck. You also don't get to see how many hits you have remaining until you die, though in that regard, I'm pretty sure it's only something like 4 shots until you heal over for each respective scene. That said, it can be a bit frustrating, since there'll be times where enemies might choose to hang back from you when you're low on ammo, obliging you to soak a hit or two as you ponderously shuffle forward. What's more, there'll be instances where enemy will be just off screen and taking pot shots at you, which led to more than a few cheap deaths during the course of my playthrough. I think the worst element, however, is that once you've cleared the stage, you have almost seen everything the game has to offer in regards to the enemy composition and situations, with the major differences beyond that being the environment you're leaving laden with corpses. Not that the downtime segments are free of monotony. No, for one thing, the protagonist's lead shoes aren't simply relegated to combat sections, which meant that a fair portion of my downtime was expended simply by virtue of walking around from place to place. Yes, there was a certain degree of pleasure to be found in exploring the city, but this was quickly replaced by a sense of soul-draining tedium as they exhausted everything there was to do. I can't count the number of days I simply spent drinking or wandering aimlessly in an effort to pass the time faster. Still, however much I might begrudge those elements of the game, its soundtrack is monumentally delightful to listen to. It managed to turn segments that should have been soul-numbing tedium and had me looking forward to them, if only for whatever musical theme it was going to introduce. Not that the themes introduced during your downtime were any sledge. Likewise, the overall quality of the game's pixel work was fairly nice, with some legitimately slick animations to accompany things. That's not to say there wasn't janky elements like the protagonist's walking animations, but by and large, I enjoyed the presentation. What I was less keen on was the incorporation of the foreground into the game's difficulty, if only because later levels introduce enemies hiding behind pieces of it to take pot shots at you. Whilst it does add a cinematic feeling to the segments, it also just made them incredibly annoying. Anyways, this brings me to the conclusion, and if it wasn't abundantly clear by this point, I was not a fan. 
Whilst there were certainly elements of the game which would pique at my interest, I found myself ultimately slogging through an experience which fundamentally felt empty. While there was a certain sense of satisfaction in clearing the action segments, there were also frequent forays into frustration, courtesy of the occasional mook spawning off screen and shooting me to death, and the simple act of wading through endless tides of mooks to slowly saunter from one side of the screen to the next was a hassle, to put it nicely. There was a sense of comedy to be found in the body count, and the casualness of the aftermath, but even then, the game managed to dampen my spirits with the sheer mundane mediocrity of the day-to-day -day segments. Even with as stellar a soundtrack as it has, ultimately, I'd say that this sense of hollow blandness is why I couldn't really see myself recommending this to anyone. And so I'd personally rate it as a fail, which is a shame given that fantastic score. Anywho, thanks for tuning in. If you agree, disagree, or just have something to say to me, feel free to comment. And for those interested in more indie reviews, developer interviews, podcasts, or Monday TTRPG content, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you know when there's a new release. There's also a Discord, you can click the link in the banner or description to be a part of our community, the Crit Hit Cauldron. Lastly, if you'd like to help support the channel, we do have a coffee running now to help supplement funds for our lovely editor, Ram, and make sure we can continue to provide quality content. Again, check the description and the banner for demo links. That said, I'll catch you on the next episode of Crit Hit. Take care till then, folks.